Hi, I'm Nina Griffin, and this is the Astrology and Magic channel. Today, we'll talk about the astrology of November 2021. Yes, it's almost the end of the year. I can't believe it. First up, I wanted to say thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. If you would like to join my Patreon, where we talk about astrology and magic, and that provides a lot of content exclusive to patrons on these topics, as well as the popular Magical Elections monthly document, please go to patreon.com slash Nina Griffin. Now, let's talk about October and to see how that leads us into November. So in October, we had three of the classical planets and then also Pluto turn direct. So I think that the end of the month particularly brought a sense of forward movement and maybe even optimism, whereas before we might have felt kind of stuck and stagnant. Some of the more, I think, angry and aggravating energies that we've been experiencing from September and the first half of October calmed down a little bit in the second half of the month as Jupiter stationed direct, and of course Jupiter is one of the key planets of peace. The October 20th Aries full moon, which would be effective for two weeks, so a little bit into early November, was on Spica and opposed Mars in Libra. So we definitely felt some tensions between what we know is good for us communally, as people, and then the things we may want as individuals. What's interesting is that we had this series of Mercury-Jupiter trines, and I had thought that they were about vaccine approvals for kids under 12 in the US, but they were actually, um, at least one of them, coincided with a vaccine mandate for students in California. So looking ahead at November, we have fewer aspects than in other months, but what we do have carries an extra punch. The four key events are Mercury and Mars squaring Saturn, Mars opposing Uranus, then we have a lunar eclipse, and then Mars's morning rise. And of course, we'll talk about each of these in greater detail when we come to their particular week. So week one, we have the new moon at 12 degrees Scorpio. Now this is another Mars ruled lunation. And this time we are also conjoining Mars with this lunation. I think that Mars in Scorpio is a more subtle experience than we have seen, for example, with Mars in Aries. And in Scorpio, Mars is in his domicile, but his activity is harder to see. And this is because Scorpio is a nocturnal sign, but nonetheless, it packs a significant punch. Collectively, this lunation will impact, I think, real estate and other Saturnian industries, due to Mars squaring Saturn. There could be real estate slowdowns, there could be real estate panics in some places such as China, which has had a dramatic housing crash over the last several months. The same day, November 4th, the Sun will oppose Uranus. And normally I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that. However, this is important now because this triggers the ongoing Saturn-Uranus square. As predicted, uh, COVID cases have started rising in places that haven't had an upsurge since spring, including much of Europe, which had handled COVID uh, fairly well. So this aspect, November 4th, will then lead into December's third and final Saturn square Uranus. If you haven't watched my uh, annual forecast, which is available on YouTube, you will know that the Saturn square Uranus is very much linked to pandemics and it has brought uh, various epidemics and pandemics over the years. Now, November 5th, Venus will enter Capricorn, and I think that Capricorn is a nice placement for Venus in many ways. It's dynamic because it's cardinal, but Saturn adds some guardrails to Venus's excesses. Venus will be in her own triplicity uh, by day throughout her time in Capricorn, and so she will stay in Capricorn until uh, March 6th, when she will finally transition into Aquarius because she is going to be retrograde much of that time. Usually she spends only about a month in each sign, but because she is retrograding and going back and forth within Capricorn, she'll spend a lot of time there. So I think that entertainment, socializing, pleasure, enjoyment is now going to be more adult and responsible and it's going to be enjoyment with a purpose. Uh, it's not going to be just, hey, let's live for today. I would also predict lots of time with grandparents who of course are ruled by Saturn, the sign that rules Capricorn. Now, November 5th, same day, Mercury enters Scorpio and Mercury doesn't have dignity in Scorpio except for a few degrees in the middle as a bound Lord. And so this is not a, a great placement for Scorpio in terms of essential dignity 
but it's not terrible. It certainly changes the dialogue from being very argumentative and in your face, which is a Mercury in Libra uh, placement, but it's going to be much more, of course, subversive, conspiracy minded, but there's also the possibility of uh, information coming out regarding toxins and uh, poisons of various kinds, because of course, Scorpio rules those things. November 6th, Mercury will sextile Venus at one Scorpio in Capricorn. And this is not a strong aspect, but it's one that's been in place since about mid-October in the U. And so in the US, uh, the focus has been on, I think, student benefits. So, you know, we had Pell Grants that were expanded in early October, and there's been a strong focus on funding early education as well as community colleges. And so I think that with this aspect peaking, we're going to see more of that discussion in the news. It won't just be November 6th, but as long as these planets are really in orb, we'll get a sense of a strong emphasis on these topics. On a personal level, obviously we can be very persuasive and charming now, especially if these planets are doing anything or transiting anything in our own natal chart. Now, the second week of November uh, starts off with November 10th, which is a very, very active day. Mars will square Saturn at seven Scorpio and Aquarius. So this is one of those important aspects that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Two superior planets meeting is always important, and this is going to be felt and noticed. Now, unlike last year with Mars in Aries squaring Saturn in Capricorn, Mars in Scorpio squaring Saturn in Aquarius is a more even contest. It's a stronger and harder to predict contest because both planets now, of course, are in domicile, but Mars is in a superior square to Saturn. And so it's going to be more challenging. Now, Saturn is still, just by his nature, a superior planet to Mars. So I suspect that Mars is still not going to get everything he wants, but it's a much closer matchup. Now, nonetheless, if there is going to be a contest, it's going to be a winner by just a hair. Now, the thing about Mars squaring Saturn is that this is a powerful activation of the ongoing Saturn-Uranus square. It does dramatically increase COVID cases, as well as the overall societal negotiation between anarchy on the one hand, which is Uranus, and authoritarianism on the other, which is Saturn. Now, it's definitely Mars getting in the mix. The, it means that the status quo is going to be destabilized. And so that negotiation, that discussion, that agitation about where are we on the spectrum, where do we need to be, is going to really uh, start over again. Same day, Mercury will conjoin Mars. So in reality, we're going to have Mercury and Mars squaring Saturn. And so Mercury's assisting Mars here. And the contest is going to be much louder, more contentious. And in public matters, I think that business puts their finger on the scale on the side of Mars. The business in question would be industries involving toxic materials like chemicals and also oil, as Scorpio rules poisons and black liquids. In our personal lives right now, we're going to likely see some clash of the titans that we need to avoid. We don't want to be Mars or Saturn now because this is a battle to the death with no clear winners. And I think it's just going to be a lot of damage incurred. So this is something where we just want to distance ourselves. Don't be Mercury, don't be Mars, don't be Saturn. I know that's a lot of don'ts, but I think it's safer that way. Now, November 13th, we will have a morning set for Mercury as he enters the sun's rays for his renewal. He will emerge as an evening planet in about a month's time. Whenever a planet enters the sun's rays, it means it gets so close to the sun, that planet can no longer be viewed because of the sun's brightness. And metaphorically, mythologically, this is interpreted as a cleansing and renewal period for that particular planet. It's a difficult time for that planet because nobody likes being sort of purified in the solar furnace. It's not a pleasant experience, but at the end of it, the planet emerges in great potency and great strength. So Mercury is going to set into the sun's rays. And this to me also emphasizes the importance of not taking on an intermediary role in conflicts like Mercury, because clearly he is going to get incinerated in this battle between Mars and Saturn. Week three, November 15th, Sun will square Jupiter at 23 Scorpio and Aquarius. 
And I think that we could see a struggle between authority figures and the law or people who have wealth, because that, of course, is represented by Jupiter as well. Now, this often happens behind the scenes, but sometimes we get this in the form of legal verdicts disfavoring the government and uh, other solar people and institutions. On the personal level, you know, we might enter into conflicts with people who are wealthy or highly placed socially or religious. So I would really avoid this day for asking for favors or raises or the like from one's social betters, so to speak. November 17th, Mars will oppose Uranus at 12 Scorpio and Taurus, which is going to be an important aspect. This completes that Saturn-Uranus activation that we started seeing the previous week, and even in many ways in late October with the Sun aspecting Saturn-Uranus. So again, November 17th, we get that sense of destabilization and we're back on that pendulum of overly restrictive regulations versus society annihilating behaviors. The good news is that it gets better gradually after December as the Saturn-Uranus aspect starts to separate. November 19th, we have a lunar eclipse at 27 Taurus, and this eclipse is ruled by Venus in Capricorn, so it's going to be about, I think, in many ways about racial equality, about getting along socially with people who are different from ourselves. Now, I think that it will involve education as well, since Mercury will oppose the full moon. Finally, this eclipse is on the fixed star Algol at 26 degrees Taurus, so this could also involve violence in some way and may even lead up to some of those Venus retrograde events that we'll start seeing in a few weeks in December. November 20th, Mercury will square Jupiter at 24 Scorpio Aquarius, and I think that there could be some kind of legal setback or judicial setback or a, um, a legislative setback for wealthy people. Maybe this pertains to some kind of billionaire tax or something like that that the U.S. Congress is working on. November 21st, the Sun will enter Sagittarius, which is a brighter season than Sun in Scorpio. Um, it's certainly an opportunity for a reset for various authority figures, small and large, and our relationships with them as well. Now, week four, November 22nd, is another important event of this month, which is Mars's morning rise at 15 Scorpio. This is important because Mars had been under the sun's beams since August 23rd. So it was a three month period of obscurity, of purification, of difficulty for Mars. And it now comes to an end and he emerges out of an intense period of purification again to be reborn. On the world scene, I would expect this to be aligned with the COVID resurgence, but also resurgence of militias and guerrillas, you know, like the Taliban. However, Mars is squared by Saturn in his emergence, so his triumph is not complete. It is limited somewhat. November 24th, Mercury will enter Sagittarius and Mercury, Mercury here enters into his debility. So there could be school closures or other challenges involving Mercury of people like students, but there could also be some types of businesses that are impacted. On a personal level, Mercury in Sag is a time to be extra tactful, as this is one of the so-called loud-voiced signs, and it's not given especially to harmonious verbal exchanges. In this sense, uh, humor and speech can often be used as a weapon. And Sagittarius is particularly often associated with humor, but often we will see this in the form of an oppressive form of humor, where people are punching down at more vulnerable people rather than up at authority figures who may deserve it. So I think that this could come up as an issue now and watch out for participating in those kind of patterns now. Now, November 25th, Mercury will conjoin the South Node, which is challenging for Mercury. And it's a double problem because Mercury is also in Sagittarius where it's debilitated. So certainly being in a Mercurial role at the end of November is not going to be helpful. November 28th, Mercury will conjoin the Sun at 7 Sag. It's the start of a new cycle for Mercury. It's certainly a purification of some kind. I think that it will be some kind of reset for students as well as businesses around this time, academic institutions in general. Now week five, we have Mercury and the Sun sextile Saturn. This will happen over November 29th and 30th at 8 Sag in Aquarius. To me, this really supports the idea of an educational or business reset going into the holiday season. I think that we will see some kind of stabilizing or guiding larger idea or proposal 
after some of the social extremes that we experienced early in the month. In terms of weather, I just wanted to mention that the Mars aspects to Saturn and Uranus could bring some kind of storms. And I would expect that November is relatively stormy uh, as far as Novembers go. So to summarize, we have had fewer aspects this month, so there is less of a feeling of ongoing churn and change, but more like a handful of weighty things happening personally and collectively. And we have a little more time to adjust until the next thing comes along. The middle of the month is the most intense, but we do reach some kind of equilibrium by the month's end. All right, thanks for watching. I'm Nina Griffin. Please subscribe to my channel to get notified of new videos, and I'll see you next time.